We're going to look at version control from first principles. And for these videos, the first principle is that the changes we make to computer programs are discrete, not continuous. I'll explain what I mean with a very simple example. Here's a trivial program in a made-up language. It just declares the function twice a to be two times a. And all I'm going to do is add another function saying that thrice a is three times a. But as soon as I start typing, this program becomes syntactically incorrect. It won't compile. I keep typing a bit more, and eventually my program will compile, but it's wrong. Thrice a isn't three, it's three times a. My next few edits make the program syntactically incorrect again, and then eventually I reach a state where the program compiles and works again and has my change in it. OK, so that's an artificially small example in a single file. But the same principle is true for larger changes across multiple files. I might change a function definition in one file and then need to update all the places where that function is called. This has an important impact on how we collaborate on programs. Here's me working on some code. And while I'm working, sometimes my code will compile and sometimes it won't. But most programs are written by more than one person. So here's my colleague, and she's also writing features for the program. And sometimes her code compiles, and sometimes it doesn't. If we just synchronize the files between us, sharing our changes with each other all the time, the program would spend most of the time broken. And this would make things very difficult for us. I'd try to compile and run the program, and it would fail. And I wouldn't know if it was because of changes I'd made to the code or because of the changes my colleague was making. It would be very frustrating and we'd find it very hard to progress. In programming, it's considered the height of rudeness to share a change that breaks your colleague's code. And one of the phrases you'll hear fairly often in your career is don't break the build. By which we mean that if you've changed something and it breaks your colleague's code, then don't share those changes. Keep it to yourself until you've fixed it. So we don't share our changes continuously. Instead, we think about it as if our code starts in one shareable state. And we make our changes privately until we've reached another shareable state, a state where the program works again and now has our change in it. Those shareable states are snapshots of our code, and we call them commits because that's when we commit our changes. And the changes we've made to the files going from one commit to the next are called a change set. I'd like to give you five simple problems that we'll see in these first few videos to motivate you as you begin to understand how the version control system can help us in our work. These aren't the only ways it's going to help us, but hopefully they're enough to prove its usefulness and why it is the way it is. The first is reversion. What if the change I'm about to make turns out not to be any good after all? How can I undo those changes after I've made them? The second is change control. Someone else changed something. What did they do? Or worse, I go to bed one evening and everything's fine. And then when I wake up in the morning, I find the program doesn't work anymore. My colleagues have broken it overnight. What did they do? The next is branching. I managed to sell a copy of my program to Algernon, and he's happy. But Bertie wants some more features before he'll buy it, so I start adding functionality for him. But Algernon doesn't want Bertie's features. His version of the program is just fine, thank you very much, and it would disturb his staff to see their program changing for no particular reason. But every now and then he does want a bug fixed. So now I have to maintain the version I sold to Algernon as well as writing new features to sell to Bertie. The next one is merging. Wouldn't you know it, sometime later Algernon decides he would like some of the features I wrote for Bertie after all. And the fifth one is patching. Cecily, who works on a different team, has managed to solve a nasty bug us having trouble with, and she'd like to send me the change that will fix it. We'll start with reversion. So there I am, making changes to the program and committing my changes each time I think I've written a good, shareable chunk of work. And of course, I think each of these commits is a good one. Except, it turns out the last one isn't. It's broken something. What I'd like to do is get back to the previous state before I committed those changes. But once we've shared a change, we like time to flow forwards, not backwards. We can't snatch a commit back from under our colleagues' noses. So instead, what we do is make a fresh commit that reverts our change, putting our code back how it was before. 
but time has still flowed forwards and we can still see the reverted change in the commit graph. This commit graph can tell us the history of our code. When we make a commit to our code, we put a message with it describing what we were changing and the version control system will remember who made the commit and when. So if we look through the commits, we can see how we developed our code. From the initial revision, I added a shiny feature, then a colorful feature, then added my brilliant idea, and then reverted my not so brilliant idea. That's our code's history or changelog. 